Hare Krishna, dear devotees, on behalf of Srila Prabhupada and its of Atlanta, I would like to welcome all of you to this wonderful series of Deliverance of Putana from Srimad of Bhagavadam by His Grace Amrinda Prabhu. So yesterday we had a little confusion, so we started and then we had to call up, again we restarted, so thank you all for giving your association. Those who missed uh, can always see that on YouTube. So please do visit because yesterday's class was very important. One very important instruction was given. And that was all about, you know, uh, how His Holiness Radhana Swami tells us that what this life is all about. He says, Krishna gives us 70 to 80 years of life to decide that one thought at the time of death should be. You know, so if you want to remember Krishna, the entire life that you are living, should you live Krishna conscious, then only we can remember. So that was very profound and very important instruction. So with, with that, we'll begin to raise Katha. I request you to Prabhu to begin to raise Katha. Hare Krishna. Thank you very much. Hare Krishna, dear Jai Kumar Prabhu. Hare Krishna, everyone. Hare Krishna, 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 Hare Vandeham Shri Guru Shri Yutapadakamalam Shri Guru Vaishnavamscha Shri Rupam Sagrajatam Sahagana Raguna Tanvitam Tam Sajivam Sadvaitam Savadhutam Parijana Sahitam Krishna Chaitanya Devam Shri Radha Krishna Padan Sahagana Lalita Shri Vishakan Vitamscha He Krishna Karuna Sindho Dina Bandho Jagatpate Gopesha Gopika Kanta Radha Kanta Namostate Tatta Kanchana Gaurangi, Shri Radhe Vrindavaneshwari, Vrishabhanu Sute Devi, Pranamami Hari Priye, Vanchakal Patarubhyas Chakrapa Sindhubya Eva Chapatitanam Pavane Vaishnavi Bhunamona Maha, Nama Om Vishnapadaya Krishna Prishtaya Bhutale Shri Mate Bhakti Vedanta Swaminiti Namini, Namaste Saraswati Deve Gauravani Pracharane, Nirvishesha Shunyava Di Pashtati Deshatarani, Jai Shri Krishna Chaitanya Prabhu Nityananda, Shri Advaita Gadadhar Shri Vasadi Gaur Bhakta Vrinda 
हरे कृष्णा हरे कृष्णा 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 हरे 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 राम हरे राम 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 हरे 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 कृष्णा हरे कृष्णा 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 हरे 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 राम हरे राम 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 हरे 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 कृष्णा हरे कृष्णा 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 हरे 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 राम हरे राम 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 हरे हरे वेलकम एवरी वन हरे कृष्णा वेलकम बैक टू द स्टडी ऑफ ग्रंथ राज श्रीमद भागवतम बाय स्टडिंग विच आवर सचि नंदन गौर हरि इज सुप्रीमली प्लीज्ड फॉर ऑल गौरी वैष्णव श्री चैतन्य महाप्रभु हैज सेड दैट श्रीमद भागवतम इज आवर ग्रेटेस्ट प्रमाण श्रीमद भागवतम पुराण ममलम यद वैष्णवा प्रियम वेरी डियर टू द वैष्णवस एंड श्रीनाथ चक्रवर्ती इन चैतन्य मत मंजूषा ऑल्सो सेस रम्या काजिद उपासना व्रजवधुम वर्घेन या कल्पिता श्रीमद्भागवतम पुराण ममल प्रेम पुमर्थो महान श्री चैतन्य महाप्रभोर्मतम तत्राधरा नपर दैट महाप्रभुज ओपीनियन इज सच दैट वर्शिप कृष्ण इन द लैंड ऑफ बृंदावन मेक बृंदावन योर इटर्नल रेजिडेंस फॉलो द फुट स्टेप्स ऑफ द ब्रज गोपीज मेक कृष्ण प्रेम द गोल ऑफ योर लाइफ and the study of shrimad bhagavatam the pathway and the goal to attain so these are the five fingers on the palm of a gaudiya vaishnav so whenever uh, a gaudiya vaishnav looks at his palm he doesn't see from a palmistry point of view he sees uh, the five fingers as the five points of mahaprabhu's conclusion or he may see the five fingers to be sadhu sanga naam kirtan bhagavata shravan mathura vasa shri murti ra shraddhaya sevan as the five limbs of bhakti as associating with the sadhus was definitely is the thumb according to palmistry these four fingers are considered to be fingers but it's an offense to say that the thumb is just a finger it's not just a finger it is the main finger it's almost like a hand of its own <laughs> like there is a whole study of um, lines on the palm by which we can predict somebody's future it's called palmistry but at the same time there there's a whole chapter on the studying the thumb so just by studying the thumb you can get more than 50 or 60% of the accurately the characteristics of a personal a person's uh, overall character the shape of the thumb the length of the thumb the the color of the nail the shape of the nail and so many other things the the stretchability and the flexibility of the thumb so many things can be mentioned even the the knots these bones etc so my point is the thumb is part of the the palm family but it's not just a finger right so out of the five fingers of devotion sadhu sanga is the thumb it is not just a limb it is the main process if we associate with the sadhu automatically he will speak shrimad bhagavatam automatically he will make you chant naam sankirtan automatically he will bring you to the dham and give a deity installed these are the things that a sadhu does so naam kirtan bhagavata shravan mathura vas and shri murti seva mm, chanting the holy name and studying shrimad bhagavatam residing in the abode holy abode and worshiping the deities they all happen in sadhu sangha so when a gaudi vaishnav looks at his palm either he will see the five conclusions of mahaprabhu by the aradhya bhagavan brijesh tanaya swars or he will see the five limbs of bhakti <laughs> so the point is Shrimad Bhagavatam is one among them and it is great fortune for us to get a chance to study Shrimad Bhagavatam so with that as the introduction let us read the verses of Shrimad Bhagavatam and then we will get started let's begin canto 10 chapter 6 the deliverance of putana shri shuka uvach nandah pathivach shaurer nam risheti vichintayan हरिं जगाम शरण मुत्तागम शंकि कंसेन प्रहिता घोरा पूतना बालघाति शिशुश्च चार निघंती पुरग्राम व्रजादिषु न यवणादी रक्षोघ्ना स्वकर्मसु कुरती सात्ता भर्तुर्या धान्यश्च ती साखे चरी एकदत्पत्य पूतनानंदगोकुल योषिवा मययात्मा प्राविशत् कामचारिणी तां केशबंध व्यतिशक्त मल्लिका बृहन्नीतंबस्तन कृच्रमध्यमा सुवास संकलकर्णभूषण लसत्कुतल मंडितानना वलगुस्मतांग विसर्ग वीक्षित मनोहरतीम वनिताजौकसा 
अमं सता भोजकण रूपिणी गोप्यश्रिय द्रष्टुमिवागत पति बालगृहस्त्र विचिन्वती शिशून यदृछयानंद गृहे सदंतक बालं प्रति छन्न निजो तेजस ददर्श तल्पेमिवाहित भसी विबुध्यतालकमाग्रह चराचरात्मा सीमीलि क्षण अनंतमारोपयदंगमतक यथोरुगम सुप्त मुबुद्धिज्जुती ताम तीक्षिताचेषिता वीक्षाकोशपरिच्छदा शिव वरस्त्रि तत्भया चर्षि निरीक्ष्यम जननी यतिषता तस्तन दुर्जर वीरमुलबण घोरांकदा शिशो ददावथ गाढ़ कराभ्यां भगवान्पीड्य तत्ण समं रोषसम पिबत सा मुंच मुंचालमी प्रभाषिणी निष्पीड्यखिलजीवमर्मणि विवृत्तनेत्रे चरण भुज मुहु प्रसन्न गात्रा क्षिपतीरुरोद तस्वनेतिगभीरहसा साद्रिर्मीद्यौचाल सग्रह रसादिश्च प्रतिजना पेतुक्षित वज्र निपात शंकया निशाचरीथम व्यथितस्तना व्यसूर व्यादा केशाशरण भुज अभी प्रसार्य गोष्ठे निजूपमास्थिता वज्राहत वृत्र इवापत नृप पतमानोपि तदेहस्त्रिगव्यूत्यंतरद्रुमा चूर्णयामास राजेन्द्र महदासी तदुत ईशाग्रदम श्रास्यम गिरीकंदर नासीक गंडशैलस्तन रौद्रम प्रकीर्णारुणमूर्धज अंधकूपगभीराक्ष पुलिनारोह भीषण बद्ध सेतुभुज रंग्रे शून्यतोयरदोदर सतुस्मतवीक्ष गोपा गोप्य कलेवर पूर्व तो तस्वनीत भिन्न ऋत्कर्णमस्तका बालम च तस्रसी क्रीडंत अकु भय गोप्यस्तूर्ण सम्येत्य जग्रहू जात संभ्रमा यशोदारोहिणीभ्यांता समं बाल सेवत रक्षा विदधि सम्यगोपुच्छ भ्रमणादि गोमूत्रेण स्नापय्वा पुनर्गोरजसाभक रक्षा चक्रुश्च चक्रता द्वादशांगेशु नाम गोप्य संस्पृष्ट सलिलांगेशु करोर्पृथक् न्यस्यात्मनी अथ बाल से बीजन्यासमकूर्वत अव्यादजोंग्रिमिमस्तवजावथोरु यज्ञोच्युत कटितट जटर हयास हृदकेशवस्वुर ईश इनस्तु कंठम विष्णुर्भुज मुखमुरुक्रम ईश्वर कम चक्रग्रत सह गो हरि अस्तु पश्चात्पाशोधनुरसी मधुहाजन कोणेशु शंख उय उपर्युपेन्द्र स्ताक्षक्षित हलधर पुरुष सुमता इंद्रिया ऋषिकेश प्राण नारायण वतु श्वेतद्वीपतिश्चित मनो योगेशरो वत पृश्गर्भस्तु ते बुद्धि आत्मा भगवान्पर क्रीडंत पा गोविंद शयान पा माधव व्रजत अव्यादकुंठ आसीन तां श्रेयपति भुंजान यज्ञुक्पा सर्वग्रह भयंकर डाकिो या तो धान्यश्च कुंडाग्रह भूत प्रेत पिशाशाश्च रक्ष यक्षरक्ष विनायका कोटरा रेवती ज्येष्ठा पूतना मतृकादय उन्मादाए अपस्मारा देह प्राणेन्द्रियद्रुह स्वप्न दृष्टा महोत्ता वृद्धा बाला ग्रहाश्च ये सर्वे नश्यंत ते विष्णुर्नाम ग्रहण भीरव श्रीशुक उवाच इति प्रणय बद्धाभिर्गोपिभीतरक्षण पाययत्वास्तन माता संयवेशयदात्मज तवद्नंदाद गोपा मथुराया व्रजन गता विलोक्य पूतना देहम बभूव अति विस्मता नून बतर्षि संजा योगेशो वस सृष्ट उत्पात यदाहनक दुंदु कलेवर पुरशुभिश्चिवा तत्ते व्रजो कस दूरे क्षिवा वयवशो व्यदहन काष्टेष्टि दह्यम से देहस धूमश्चा गुरसौरभ उत्थित कृष्ण निर्भुक्त सपद्याहत पापमन पूतना लोकबालग्नी राक्षसी रुधिराशन 
जिगांशयापिहरये स्तनम दत्वापि सद्गतिम किं पुनश्रद्धया भक्त्या कृष्णाय परमात्मने यच्चन प्रियतमं किं नो रक्तास्तन्मातरो यथा पद्भ्यां भक्तरिधि स्थाभ्यां वंदाभ्यां लोकवंदित अंगं यक्रम्य भगवान तत्स्तनम यादुधन्य सा स्वर्गम अवापजननी गति कृष्णभुक्तस्तन क्षीरा कि मुगा वो नु मतर पयांसि यासमी बत्पुत्र स्नेहस्नुताल भगवान्देवकीपुत्र कैवल्याद्यखिल प्रद तासमत कृष्ण कुरवतीना सुते क्षण न पुनः कल्पते राजन संसारो ज्ञान संभव कटधूम से सौरभ्यम अवग्राह्य व्रजौक सह किद कुत एवेति वदंत व्रजमायु ते त्र वर्णि गोपैपूतनागमनाक श्रुवा तधन स्वस्ति शिशोशासन सुविस्मता नंदस्वपुत्रय प्रेत्यागत मुदारधी मूर्धन्युपाग्राह्य पर मुदम लेभे कुरुद्व यूतना मोक्षम कृष्ण सैर्भकमुत शुणुया श्रद्धया मर्त्यो गोविंदे लभते रति गुरव गौरचंद्रा राधिकाये तदाल कृष्णा कृष्णभक्ताय तद्भक्ताय नमो नम हरे कृष्ण सो यस्ट डे वी स्टार्टेड अवर डिस्कशन ऑन द थर्टीन वर्ष ऑफ द सिक्स चैप्टर ऑफ द टेन्थ कैंटो एंड वी जस्ट गो थ्रू द वर्ष वन मोर टाइम फॉर दोज हू मिस्ड द डिस्कशन बट आई डू अ क्विक ओवर व्यू ऑफ वॉट वी डिस्कस यस्ट डे and then we will also continue ahead nisha charitham vyathitasthana vyasur vyada yakesham charano bhujau api prasarya goshthe nijarupa masthita vajra hato vritra iva patanripa so in this verse we can see nisha chari is the word that has been used for putana hmm? nisha chari इत्थम इन दिस वे दैट निशाचरी पूतना निशाचरी निशा मीन्स नाइट एंड चर मीन्स टू मूव सो निशाचरी मीन्स शी हू मूव्स एट नाइट इन दिस वे दैट पूतना हु इज एक्टिव और हु मूव्स एट नाइट व्यथित स्तना व्यसु वेन शी वॉज अटैक्ट बाय कृष्ण देन शी लॉस्ट ऑल हर लाइफ एयर्स एंड व्यादाय केशाम चरणो भुजौ अपि हर माउथ ओपन्ड हर हेयर गॉट डिसेबल्ड एंड स्कैटर्ड एंड हर लेग्स एंड हर आर्म्स स्टार्टेड एक्सपैंडिंग फर्दर द प्रीवियस वर्स इज ऑल्सो इट्स बीन मैंशन बाई शुकदेव गोस्वामी दैट हर आईज पॉप्ड आउट एंड हर हैंड्स हर आर्म्स हर लेग्स एवरीथिंग एक्सपैंडेड एंड एज शी वॉज एक्सपैंडिंग Krishna didn't want her to crush the brijbasis around the homes around the cows around the trees around so as paramatma he inspired putana run out of my house and fly in the sky <laughs> so try to avoid um, nanda griha the home of nanda maharaj so she tried running out and took the airway and krishna was still latched on to her and prasarya goshthe it's described she came down crashing in uh, kamsa's garden kamsa had a garden in vrindavan and krishna made putana destroy kamsa's garden <laughs> so krishna didn't destroy putana destroyed so in her expansion it's described kamsa's garden only got destroyed kamsa's trees got destroyed and no brijbasi no cows no trees of vrindavan were affected and nija roopama sthita she was sthit she was situated or she attained her, her nija roopam her original form which was very dangerous um so two original forms she attained one was destroying the layer of hypocrisy she attained the form of putana the the previous form the form that she held while being in the army of kamsa but yet at the same time as she was losing her life Krishna gave her original form as an assistant of Mother Yashoda in the spiritual world. And Vajra Hato Vritra Iva Patat Nirpa Nirpa O King O Maharaj Parikshit. Just like when Indra attacked Vritrasur, how Vritrasur fell down crashing, 
that is how putana came down crashing when krishna attacked so that's the general meaning of the verse so now we will see what the acharyas have written in this regard Shripad Ballabhachari ji in a Subodhini Tika writes something fascinating. There's a lot of discussion that the Acharyas have gone into regarding what this original form of Putana is. Right? What is the original form of Putana? So Shripad Ballabhachari ji writes in his Subodhini Tika, Ulukasya Bharya, Ulukika, Uluka Duhitava, Uluka Rupa Evava, Sahi Diva Bhita Rupa Bhavati. Sat Marga Vimukha Pratipakshava. So, Sripad Balabhachari ji has written in a Subodhani Tika that seems like Putana had a form of an owl. Hmm? Seems like she had a form of an owl. So, he is commenting on the word Nishachari. He says the word Nishachari can have three meanings. One, either she was active at night or her original form was that of an owl and owls are active only at night. right? Or the third meaning is the night is figurative here, is metaphorical for avidya, which means she avoids the light of the association of the sadhus. She avoids the daytime of sadhu sangha and operates in the night time of avidya, ignorance, keeps bad association. So Nishachari can have three meanings. One, either she is active at night, like many of us, this is a lesson that we can learn. Many times students ask this question, I focus better when I study at night. Hmm? Yes, no problem. If that works for you, go for it. But according to natural circadian rhythm, it's more... Um, um, natural it is more biologically in tune with how krishna has made us with respect to the clock cycle of the rising and setting of the sun and the moon to sleep early and wake up early so what you may gain let's say from 10 to 2 at night in studying in seclusion maybe you can gain much more than that by going off to sleep and maybe waking up at 2 or waking up at 3 o'clock you can capitalize the time from maybe 3 a.m to 7 a.m instead of capitalizing the time from 10 p.m. to 2 a.m. 2 a. It's still four hours, but the productivity is way higher because naturally, according to human clock cycle, according to just natural clock cycle, uh, you can see it's um, more natural even for the birds to start chirping at 4 o'clock in the morning than to chirp at 11 o'clock at night. You will see no bird, no animal, which is in Satvagun, um, being awake at night, and um, um, operating at night, apart from the snakes, apart from um, the hyenas, <laughs> apart from the notorious um, tamoguni animals, those in Satvagun like the cows, those in Satvagun like the elephants, you can see they are fast asleep. All the braja birds also you can see they are fast asleep, uh, except for those in Madhuri Rasa because that's the time for them to serve. <laughs> they are more active. Uh, they are chirping. So it is um, very um, spiritually, materially, emotionally, devotionally fruitful to go off to sleep early and wake up early. You can see even from a material standpoint, there are many successful sport uh, celebrities and many, um, uh, many of the entrepreneurs who are very successful who actually um, mentioned that the secret of their success is to wake up early. Now, they may wake up early and hit the gym or they may do yoga, that's another thing. But they also credit that to waking up early. Uh, there was a very famous um, basketball player, Kobe Bryant, who left um, a year or two, uh, I think last year if I'm not wrong, and um, it was a shock to the whole world because he was young, he was in his 40s, very successful, many times compared to Michael Jordan and sometimes by many to be even better in many ways. So he was um, young, 41, 42, I believe, a very successful basketball player. So one time uh, I happened to see 
a, an interview of Kobe Bryant. And I was thinking, what is the Krishna conscious lesson that we can learn? And I caught something which is in line with what we are discussing. So he mentioned that, uh, of course, I'm not quoting him as an Acharya or as a Praman, but we can always gain from all circumstances, from everyone, provided we know what to gain on our path, right? We can always learn. And the Praman for that is the 11th Canto Bhagavatam, where we can see that uh, the Avaduta had so many Shiksha Gurus. He learned from the snake, he learned from the ocean, he learned from Mother Earth, he even learned from a prostitute. So our learning should continue. Even if we are uh, in a, we are, let's say, outside a nightclub, Srila Prabhupada's vision was to go and distribute books inside, right? Utility is the principle. So he was explaining in uh, an interview that let's say if you want to be successful, if you want to be the best basketball player that you can be, not the world has seen what you can be, then you really have to train. You have to work hard. You have to give in more hours. He said, now let's say if someone sleeps till 8 o'clock in the morning, then by the time they get ready and they hit the court for their first uh, set of practice, it's going to be at least 9 o'clock, right? 8.30, 9 o'clock by the time you hit the basketball court. And let's say you train for two hours, you go from 9 to 11. Uh, the sun is out there, so you're going to work uh, your way. And then after that, um, depending if it's an outside court or an indoor court, then let's say you train for two hours, two and a half hours, till maybe 11, 11.30. And then after that, you come, you eat something, you let your body relax, and then maybe you try another session from about 2, 2.30 to maybe 4.35. Uh, then you get tired, you come home, you relax, you eat something. So you, he's, he was saying that typically you can get only two or maximum three sessions done of two hours each in a day. But on the other hand, let's say you wake up at around 3.30 in the morning. This is what he was saying. You can hit the court at 4 o'clock. And from 4 to 6, you have one session done. You come, you know, you take like maybe a quick, um, maybe a small drink, uh, like a protein drink or something to rejuvenate yourself. And then you hit the court again, let's say at around 8.30 or 9 o'clock. And then you see another session. And um, then maybe at 1 o'clock or 2 o'clock, you get another session till about 4. And then maybe in the evening, you can squeeze another 6 to 8 or 7 to 9. So he said, when you start early, you get more number of sessions, more hours of hard work in the court. And naturally, it brings out the best in you. And you can offer the sport your best version. Not what the best the world has seen, but at least you can compete with your own um, situation. <laughs> the best that you can offer. So he was mentioning um, that even from a material standpoint for success in uh, sports and career, it's always fruitful to wake up early. It's fruitful to wake up early. Um, and so many entrepreneurs, so many CEOs, um, I have, uh, in fact, there was one point when I went through many books just to see a common trait between those who are successful materially. And out of many things that I saw, one thing was they attributed waking up early to their success. Um, so that is important. And then if that is the hard work we have to put in to be successful uh, for feeding our belly, then imagine the hard work we have to put in to feed our heart. We are not lazy people. In Australia, when Srila Prabhupada saw devotees sleeping in the afternoon because of jet lag, Prabhupada said, why is everybody sleeping? What is there to sleep? The devotee said, Prabhupada, because of the travel, we got tired. Prabhupada said, even the karmis outside don't sleep in the afternoon. They are working so hard. Prabhupada said, the farmer works so hard to get the crops. And you are eating those crops and sleeping. Prabhupada said, just see, this is the laziness in the army of Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. One should not sleep. One should not waste time. One should absolutely not waste time as much as possible. One very exalted um, disciple of Prabhupada Bhakti Siddhanta Saraswati Thakur um, in the Gaudiya Mat, um, he had uh, Harinam Diksha from Prabhupada Saraswati Thakur and took second initiation from Srila Bhakti Pragyan Keshav Goswami Maharaj by the name Srila Bhakti Vedanta Vaman Goswami Maharaj. Um, in the Gaudiya Mat, um, he was sitting and chanting Japa. <laughs> 
and some disciples and servants they got the prasadam plate and the breakfast plate and the lunch plate just remained as it is and now it was time in the evening and they got another plate they said uh, maharaj why don't you eat and they were telling him five ten times please eat please eat he said please don't trouble me please don't disturb me i'm very busy so one devotee said but maharaj you're just sitting and chanting why where is like <laughs> he had the audacity <laughs> which is very inappropriate as a point to be mentioned to to counter question or ask a question like this to our superiors um so shri lavaman maharaj said that radharani wants her sakhis to serve krishna on time make all the arrangements on time and the sakhis depend on the maid servants and he pointed to himself he said the sakhis depend on the maid servants to serve radha and krishna and when the services are not on time radharani is displeased so then he paused he said so should i listen to the sakhis and serve radha and krishna chanting and pleasing them or should i listen to you and eat this prasadam plate he said what should i do i am very busy serving them i have no time leave me alone so that is how cautious the acharyas are in in utilizing every moment in the service of krishna and as far as waking up is concerned um even from an ayurveda standpoint from yoga standpoint human life doesn't even begin till we don't determine and we don't force ourselves to wake up early so then the question could be what if we sleep late what should we do should we force ourselves to wake up in the morning or should we catch up so many hours and sleep do we understand the question like sometimes we have we get a, you know we we go, get to the bed by 11 11:30 at night so should we still force ourselves and wake up by 4 4:30 or should we get proper rest and then wake up i will leave that to you i'm not going to answer but <laughs> but the ideal thing could be um let's say um if you can hit the bed earlier then you can get a complete rest and then you can wake up on time and it is sustainable it is a model that sustainable let's say we think come what may whatever time i sleep i'm going to wake up at the same time yes that's a good idea too but then maybe in the week you can have one day which is a cheat day where you can sleep through to catch up on all that lost sleep you can you can try that so let's say if you sleep at 11 o'clock and let's say you make a vrat that i will wake up at 4 o'clock now that kartik vrat is beginning dear devotees this is very important very very important and i will mention this um, why on multiple fronts um point number 1 sleeping through brahma muhurta reduces our life span surya dev is rising and we are sleeping we should be awake to welcome him mm, we should be awake to welcome him actually in the bhagavatam it is described the brijbasis would offer arati to surya dev so even shrimati radharani would offer puja to surya dev at surya kund um so we don't have to literally offer yes there's nothing wrong if you offer the lamp to radha shamsundar then you can also offer that prasadi to surya dev because he's a very powerful personality so there's no nothing wrong but the minimum thing we can do to respect him is that when he's rising or before he's rising we should be up that's point number 1 point number 2 in the ramayana it is described that dashrath maharaj would never miss brahma muhurta he would never miss the rising of the sun and one day when he missed the whole of ayodhya was thinking that definitely maharaj dasharatha is very ill he sick otherwise why would he miss brahma muhurta hmm? point number 3 as far as brahma muhurta is concerned it is described that bhakti vinod thakur when he would chant in brahma muhurta he had darshan of nishinga dev he would sit and chant at godram dweep and he would have uh, gushing wind and breeze experience and he would think where is the breeze coming from and then nishinga dev one day gave darshan and he said no i'm just going to the yog peet to have darshan of mahaprabhu <laughs> so <laughs> it's just the breeze of my body so Nish- so bhakti vinod thakur became so um ecstatic seeing the darshan of nishinga dev he actually composed a nishinga panchakam five verses or six verses in bengali glorifying nishinga dev and praying that may you uproot the obstacles on my path and um 
Bhaktivinoda Thakur offered that after having darshan of Nishinga Dev. And it is described that Nishinga Dev gave a Nishinga mantra to Bhaktivinoda Thakur and said that anytime you're in trouble, you can chant this mantra and I will come before you. And this mantra, uh, Srila Bhaktivinoda Thakur gave to Prabhupada Saraswati Thakur. That anytime you're preaching, you have trouble, just chant this Nishinga mantra and Nishinga Dev will protect you. And it is described coming down tradition, uh, it was Srila Bhakti Pramod Puri Goswami Maharaj in the Gaudiya Mat who received this mantra. <laughs> and then he gave that mantra to His Holiness Indra Dhyamna Maharaj in Iskhan. <laughs> so that's just a point that Bhakti Vinod Thakur had darshan of Nashingadev during Brahma Muhurta. Another important point, what is this Brahma Muhurta? Brahma, Brahma means the Supreme Lord. Para Brahma. If we cannot respect Brahma Muhurta, we cannot respect Para Brahma. If we cannot keep the appointment time of the Supreme Lord, how will we meet Him? How will we meet Him? So this was taught right in the Gurukul for the kids in the olden times, to wake up early, to clean your room, to do Vyayam, to um, have yoga and pranayam, breathing exercises and chanting on mantras in complete absorption. As soon as one wakes up, it's a very good practice. Um, actually, even the Buddhists do this, that when they wake up, right on the bed, they are sitting. They don't talk, they don't check their phone, they don't, they don't do anything. As soon as they wake up, they are on the bed for about 5-10 minutes. Because since we have been resting for about 5-6 hours, the consciousness is pretty steady at that time. It's not gone through fluctuations of seeing something, hearing something, speaking something, thinking something, right? And the consciousness is pretty steady at that time. So we can tap into that time for our meditation by waking up and about 5-10 minutes remembering the mantra that we have been initiated in or chanting the Hare Krishna Maha Mantra or chanting Jayati Janani Vaso Devaki Janma Vado Yaduvar Parishat Swair Dor Virasyanna Dharmam Stirachara Vraji Nagna Susmita Shri Mukhena Vrajapura Vanitanam Vardhayan Kama Devam This is the essence of the 10th canto, Krishna Leela. So to chant verses like this and meditate on the meaning or just sitting there folding our palms and praying to Krishna. You can pray in your mother tongue. It doesn't have to be Sanskrit or Bengali. Yes, if it's Sanskrit or Bengali, you can offer what the Acharya has offered. No harm. But if you want to offer your own prayer in your own mother tongue, think Radha and Krishna are sitting in front of you and talk to them. Close your eyes, fold your palms, not evidently telling everyone how great we are. Not like that. Close your, there, should, there should be fire burning, but there should be no smoke. I hope you get the point. <laughs> there should be fire in the heart, but no smoke should come out, which means no sign. Don't weep, don't show expressions, don't talk in front of everyone. Let uh, not people think that, oh, like Mahaprabhu, he's absorbed. No, not like that. <laughs> we can fold our palms, close our eyes, and speak to Radha and Krishna. Whatever you want, offer your heart. Yesterday I heard from one very senior devotee. He was giving an example of a child uh, in Mumbai. Um, and by the way, please let us not forget why we're discussing this. This is all elaboration on that word Nishachari. Shukdev Goswami is calling Putana as she who's active at night. So we are just elaborating on that. That Shukdev Goswami is catching that aspect of Putana's personality. So it's important for us to discuss. So coming to this example, uh, one senior Vaishnav yesterday um, was mentioning that uh, one child uh, from, the one, from a school in Mumbai, he was mentioning that uh, that child was going for his, um, to write his exam. And he had a pen in his hand. He was running, he was getting late for the, the examination hall. So he had a pen in, in his hand. And on the other hand, he had a little small DT of Jagannath. And he was running with a DT of Jagannath and a pen in his hand for the exam hall. So then why was he running like that when he was asked? He said, oh, I'm going for the exam, for the test. So I'm taking my Jagannath with me. <laughs> so what are you going to do? What is Jagannath going to do on the test? He said, I keep this little Jagannath on the table. And as soon as the question paper comes, I show it to Jagannath. I said, this is the paper. You please help me now. <laughs> Now you please help me. And then, of course, he has studied. So he writes all the answers to those questions. And after writing, after finishing the whole test, he shows his answer sheet to Jagannath, all the pages. 
and he says, I hope my Lord, I have done a good job. Now you take care. And then he, you know, carries a Jagannath home. So the devotee was mentioning that how did this child do this? His parents told him, offer your heart to Krishna. Live your life loving the Supreme Lord. And the child saw very innovative ways on how he could offer his heart to Krishna. How he could offer his heart to Krishna. So this is very important for us. Um, to, to keep the time in the morning so that we can develop our love for Krishna. So in the morning as soon as we wake up we can find innovative ways of calling out to Krishna either through our um, prayers or um, in our own language speaking gratitude that Krishna thank you for giving me another day to remember you. I hope today I do better than what I did yesterday. I hope even when the temptations come I'm able to remember you and I'm able to cross over those temptations. Krishna please you help me today so that I can whatever you know I'm just giving a general uh, template but you can fill in the details of your prayer so early in the morning to respect the time to respect uh, Brahma Muhurta um, is a way to respect Brahma para Brahma also Brahma means Vedas so that is the time to study and go deeper in the Vedas that's the Muhurta that's the appointment time where the Vedas work the best in your consciousness <laughs> because during the day we can see that um, Sattva Gund remains up to 9 o'clock in the morning for example and then after that from 9 o'clock or 10 o'clock in the morning it's the mode of passion up to about 6 o'clock in the evening and then from about 6 o'clock in the evening all night long it's um, Tamogun, the mode of ignorance and then early in the morning from about 3 to 7 that's the time of pure goodness it's not goodness, it's not passion, it's not ignorance, it's pure goodness. So therefore you can see, when you want to perform anything spiritual, if you try doing that at 8 o'clock at night, it's going to be way more difficult. Way more difficult than maybe let's doing it at 1 o'clock in the afternoon. Which is going to be way more difficult than let's say chanting it around 10 o'clock in the morning. Which is way more difficult than actually chanting at 4 o'clock. Is it not? We've all witnessed this. If you sit with devotees at around 4, 4.30 and you chant till about 6, 6.30, you yourself feel, wow, I have the whole day now and my rounds are done. Now, it brings in such positive energy. Like you can do it for yourself. You don't have to believe me. Chakkar deklo. You can try it yourself, right? Um, you all can try it yourself. And the day you can see when you wake up late, and you have the, the load on the head that I have enchanted today, everything becomes topsy-turvy all day. And then you chant a round or two, and then there's checking on the phone, somebody's calling, somebody's at the door, then you have to travel, then you're irritated, and then you have another 13 rounds left at 7 p.m. Typical situation, right? So uh, everything goes upside down. So if you have a jar, and if you try putting in the sand first and the little pebbles first, then you will see that the big rocks remain outside. But on the other hand, in a jar, if you put in the big rocks first, then the small pebbles can fit in and then the sand can settle and you can see you have place for everything in that jar. So in the jar of our 24 hours, let's put one thing for Karthik on priority. Waking up early and chanting our 16 rounds before 7 a.m. That's the big rock. And once you put those big rocks, then you can put the small pebbles between them. Your work, you have to go somewhere and do some bank work, or you have to um, make sure that the car is washed, or whatever. Whatever work you have, grocery shopping, getting in fruits, vegetables, flowers, you can do later. But don't do that planning in the mind while you're chanting, or don't uh, wake up late and start doing that and leave your chanting behind. If you prioritize your chanting, your chanting will prioritize you. If you prioritize Krishna, Krishna will prioritize you. Also, one more thing, as Gaudiya Vaishnavas, waking up early is um, very fruitful and very effective for one reason. And that is, it is described that Radha and Krishna, all night, they have been uh, singing and dancing and having very sweet pastimes with the gopis. Uh, they are cutting jokes. The gopis are fanning them, they are massaging their lotus feet. And finally, Radha and Krishna, they get a few moments of rest. 
<laughs> and it is described by the Acharyas at 3.36 in the morning, that's when they wake up. 3.36 in the morning. And then they have to leave the kunja, the groves created by the gopis. And Krishna has to go and Radharani has to leave. And they part at that time. They go, to, they go their own ways because they have other things to do. Krishna goes and jumps into the bed and acts as if he's asleep. So when Mother Yashoda comes, she's thinking, all night my baby has been sleeping. But Krishna has been playing the flute and singing and dancing and reciprocating so beautifully in the Rasa Leela. Um, so when Radha and Krishna, they wake up at 3.36 in the morning, exactly 3.36, not 3.35 or 3.37, but 3.36 in the morning. When they wake up, they don't just wake up like a spring. Uh, you can see that the uh, the rooster it starts making the sound hmm? and and then after that you have the kakkati which is the female monkey which is making the sound and radharani is waking up and she says oh, why are they making so much sound hmm, i think yamadutas are here <laughs> to wake us up and and slowly but surely when radha and krishna they wake up and they come out of the groves, the kunja created by Brinda Devi and the Sakhis. Then there is an arti that is performed by the Sakhis. Because this is the best darshan. Radha and Krishna are intoxicated, not just internally out of uh, Krishna Prem, but even externally because of their sleep. And um, the arati is performed. Arati, Korove, Lalita, Adi, Sakhi, Garn. Lalita Devi and other Sakhis, they perform arati. And there is... Vishakhadi Sakhi Gana Nana Rage Gai Priya Narma Sakhi Jata Chamara Dhulai. Our Acharyas have described that Vishaka Sakhi is singing very beautiful ragas, and there are some who are uh, fanning the divine couple. And those like Narottam Das Thakur, uh, Gathiya Malatir Mala Dibo Duhar Gale, Adhare Tuliya Dibo Karpura Tambule, they are making garlands to offer it to Radha and Krishna, and there are some who offer betel nut to Radha and Krishna. There are some who offer Chandan to Radha and Krishna because this is the most beautiful darshan of Radha and Krishna. After this Radha and Krishna, they, they uh, walk their own ways and then they meet only in Radha Kund in the afternoon, 12 hours later or 7 to 8 hours later. Um, so this darshan of Radha and Krishna coming out of the groves, the garden, uh, the first arati that is performed, dear devotees, this is called Mangal Arati. Mangala means auspiciousness. This darshan of Radha and Krishna is called Mangalarti. So in our temples, when the curtains open and we see Radha and Krishna together in their night dress, because the opulent Sringar darshan is done at around 7, 7, 7, 15, 7, 30 in most Iskand temples, we can see. But the Mangalarti is like the night outfit, right? So when the curtains open and you see Radha and Krishna together in the night outfit, that is the darshan of Radha and Krishna coming out of the groves after waking up. Hmm? And, and then the arati that the pujari offers and all the devotees have the saubhagya of standing and glancing, you get an entry into what the sakhis are offering to Radha and Krishna. So that is Mangal Arati. Now you please tell me what kind of devotee who wants to attain the service of Radha and Krishna will sleep during that time when Radha and Krishna have woken up and they are splitting their ways, parting ways to go to their own homes. Who is that devotee who wants to serve Radha and Krishna and sleeps through that time? So therefore, a devotee's meditation is, uh, they try to wake up um, at that time. Prabhupada writes in a purport, um, the, the devotee should try to wake up before 4 o'clock. And this is the secret and the depth of that purport. Srila Prabhupada wants us to wake up and attain this goal. <laughs> it's not that Prabhupada is saying wake up you know, before 4 o'clock just so that um, healthy, wealthy and wise may you live long. No, that's, not the, <laughs> that's not the blessing Prabhupada is giving us. What is the blessing that Prabhupada wants to give us? Radha Krishna Seva Pabo E Abhilashi. Je tu mara sharana loe tara bancha purna hoe kripa kori koro tare brinda banavasi. Prabhupada gave us Tulsi Arti. Prabhupada gave us Tulsi Arti. Prabhupada did not give us anything basic. Prabhupada came from the planet of Radha and Krishna to give Radha and Krishna. 
he didn't give he didn't come in this world to give anything less than the eternal service of Radha and Krishna Prabhupada didn't come here to teach yoga and astrology and well-being and goodness all of that comes automatically planets align automatically goodness manifests automatically uh, yoga means meeting meeting of the devotee with the divine couple happens automatically if the priority is on pure devotional principles so Prabhupada came in this world to give what Radha Krishna Seva to give us the service of Radha and Krishna to make us Brajbasis Mora e Abhilash Vilas Kunje Diyovas Dear devotees, it can get more explicit than that it can get more clearly explained than that Mora e Abhilash My desire Vilas Kunje Diyovas to live in the groves of Brindavan and do what? Nayane Heribo Sada Jugal Rupa Rasi and to glance at the divine couple that's exactly what Mangalarati is so when Prabhupada said Mangalarti compulsory in every temple, Prabhupada is making us go from animalistic consciousness up to what the gopis are practicing. Prabhupada has come. This is the spectrum of the Acharya's compassion. To lift us from the drain, from the sewage of our material consciousness and pushing us out of compassion into the groves of Braja. So this is why a Gaudiya Vaishnava should wake up early <laughs> in his heart. To welcome the divine couple and pray. Srimad Guru Rashtakameta Duchai Brahme Muhurte Patati Prayatnat Yaste Na Brinda Bananatha Sakshat Seva Ivala Bhajanushanta Eva Srila Vishwana Chakravarti Thakur has used the word Brahma Muhurta here. In the Palashruti, in the fruit of the Guru Vashtakam. Samsara Dava Nalalidha Loka. He says, Srimad Guru Vashtakam Etat Uchaihi. Anyone who chants this Guru Vashtakam early in the morning. Brahme Muhurte. Pathati prayatna. If someone chants this in the morning, then what happens? Yaste na vrinda vana natha sakshad sevai valabhya janushantaiva. At the end of this life, the person will get the service of Radha and Krishna in Vrindavan, and there is no doubt. So when Prabhupada says, follow the principle and you'll go back home back to God in one life, very, it's pramanic. Every word that of the, of the Acharya speaks, Srila Prabhupada speaks, is in line with what Srila Vishwanath Chakravarti Thakur and others have said. Prabhupada doesn't speak anything on his own. He's speaking, carrying the current of our Gaudiya Acharyas. So therefore, Putana, because this is not her aspiration, she's Nishachari. She doesn't wake up in the morning. She's just functioning all night. And our generation, our youth, uh, they are getting destroyed by this mentality. It is a sad reality. The smartphone is not making us so smart. We are all night long watching um, something on YouTube or movies or cricket. I, I know people, even um, boys who are chanting, who um, are awake. And, and I ask them, what are you doing at 2.45 at night? He says, Kya kare Prabhuji, football game. You know, I, I follow soccer, football, and there's a game that late, so I'm awake. Messi khel raha hai na Prabhu ji, kaise nahi miss karu mein? <laughs> Messi is playing, so how can I miss? I said, but uh, for that, your bhakti is becoming pretty messy. What about that? <laughs> I, you know, of course, those students who are studying and, uh, you know, 17, 18 years old. And I tell them, okay, you want to watch, you watch. But you watch as a, you know, like recorded or what do you call it? Next day, highlights or? Right? Something like that. Yeah, you watch it the next day, but don't jeopardize, don't spoil uh, your goal. Don't spoil your goal. Ideally, it's better to sleep early if that's not possible. Uh, keep a time and sleep accordingly and then wake up. And then you can have one cheat day in the week. You don't have to wake up. That day you can sleep through. Catch up on all your sleep. One day a week. But the remaining five, six days, please be sincere. Hmm. His Grace Radhesham Prabhu, when he came here recently, I was observing and he was telling me the importance of his practice. He came to Pune in 1995 and it's 20, 2022 now. So it's 27 years he's been in Pune. Not one Mangalarti has been missed. Even when he was down with fever, devotees said, Prabhuji, you take rest. He said, if something has to happen to me, better it happen in front of the deities. 
that is the dedication we need we don't want to sleep through mangalarati we don't want to sleep through morning brahma muhurta that is uh, we can't get krishna with that mentality we cannot sadhak is not someone who's sleeping till 6 o'clock 7 o'clock 8 o'clock forget about getting krishna even materially that's not good even for our health it's not good and and many other evils come with that what is keeping us awake at night something rajoguni something tamoguni so those impressions increase and such a person cannot become a brahmachari cannot hold on to his vrat not possible so in this way we can see the importance of um, prioritizing the morning program prioritizing the waking up um, prioritizing that in our life even those from a singing background they wake up early and they do their riyas or their practice swara sadhana early in the morning because your voice is well rested for 5 6 hours and that's when now it's at its best bharat ratna pandit bhim sen joshi very famous singer vocalist was saying in one interview he would practice 16 to 18 hours a day and it would start early in the morning at 3 o'clock so if that is the practice needed for the throat that is the practice needed for basketball that is the practice needed for a farmer then how can we cultivate devotion for krishna in the heart by sleeping through the morning time his grace anand vrindavan prabhu from <laughs> mumbai uh, was once mentioning in one class something very inspiring i i think it will benefit many um he said that if if we are told that we have a job interview at 4 o'clock in the morning won't we wake up if we are told that we have an examination and we will get into let's say mit or harvard or iit or any of these premium institutes at 4 o'clock there's a test don't we wake up won't we wake up if we are told that you come to the airport at 4 o'clock i will give you a briefcase of 1 crore rupees or 1 million dollars what do you think is going to happen we're going to sleep through that time we will be awake all night in anticipation to receive i hope i don't get late we may go if we, the, the, the person is supposed to meet us at 4 o'clock we may even reach there at 3:30 just to make sure i don't miss so prabhu ji was mentioning if that is the dedication for getting into a competitive school or getting a competitive job or getting money let's say someone just gives it to us why not for krishna because we think well it doesn't matter so much when we have mahatva buddhi which means we have uh, significance in our mind the importance of money importance of that position importance of that that competitive exam passing through that exam that makes us wake up but we don't think chanting and remembering krishna is that important if we can just bring in that mahatva buddhi that yes i am living and dying and breathing for krishna and krishna likes if i wake up in the morning that is good for me i should learn to give up my sleep and wake up and we can see so much can be done you can wake up you can memorize a verse you can chant hari krishna you can worship your deities um if you have to prepare a class you can prepare at that time so many times i have done that too honestly speaking i don't claim to be um a person who has never missed the morning brahma murta i don't claim to be one and i am not coming here as a sadhu or a saint or as a self realized person who's giving advice to the whole world no i don't claim to be perfect i don't think i will ever be perfect i have uh, missed morning many times but i am just trying to share my heart's uh feelings uh again not in an instructive way but in a friendly brotherly way to those uh f- for those it, to whom it matters uh, you don't have to take me seriously you don't have to listen to me but i'm just sharing it with um uh, those who are my brothers and sisters on the call um that i have missed many times but we may fall seven but we still try eight what's the problem 
till now we missed but from tomorrow we will not right we can do that there is always hope there's always light at the end of the tunnel krishna is very kind krishna is very kind so we can try many times for my class also i have woken up and um, prepared during that time i see that uh, the focus is higher at that time whether it is memorizing a verse whether it is chanting stuti prayers to krishna whether it is um, reading shastra or hearing the class of shila prabhupad and our spiritual masters and taking down notes of the points that we like brahma murta is the best time to be absorbed in krishna's service and you can see even according to the natural clock cycle according to the natural clock cycle i am going to say something which you may find to be little disgusting but uh, please take it positively you can see according to the natural clock cycle the push and the natural inclination to hit the restroom is also early in the morning it's not after that you try waking up at 8 o'clock and 9 o'clock and 7 o'clock you can see you will have stomach problems because the that's against the body cycle but you try waking up at 4 o'clock you can see as soon as you wake up you don't even have to drink water and then krishna helps you go through your natural chores very fast you save a lot of time but if you if if we wake up later we can see that um, digestion acidity so many issues come up even according to the body but when you wake up early in the morning and you let's say drink one bottle of fresh water and you're chanting krishna's name you can see very quickly krishna takes you through the duties that you have to perform in the morning and then you're there sitting with tilak all over your body in front of the deities early in the morning even according to um um different sutras and the experts in the field of yoga and in the field of um ayurveda they mention that the rest that the body gets from 9 to 12 at night although it's 3 hours of sleep the body gets 6 hours of rest and this is what shila bhakti vinod thakur used to tap into he would sleep for he would sleep during that time so that less time is invested in sleeping and more gains more returns <laughs> so they explain that between 9 and 12 at night 3 hours of sleep gives 6 hours of rest to the body and then from 12 at night to 3 in the morning it's 3 hours of sleep but the body gets only 3 hours and then from 3 to 6 in the morning it's again 3 hours of rest but the body gets half one and a half hours so 9 to 12 at night you get twice the benefit from 12 to 3 you get as much as benefit and from 3 to 6 you get half the benefit so let's say someone sleeps at 2 o'clock at night and wakes up at 8 o'clock in the in the morning so you can see he taps into 2 to 3 that's 1 hour and from 3 onwards you can see 3 to 6 he gets 1 and a half hours so he is sleeping 2 and a half hours and from 6 onwards it doesn't count because the sun is up So although he's in bed for 6 hours the body is rested less than 3 hours only 2 and a half hours and therefore he wakes up groggy and thinks by oversleeping in that bed he can catch up but it never happens But on the other hand if the person sleeps 6 hours let's say from 9 to 3 9 at night to 3 in the morning he can get 9 to 12 which is 6 hours 3 hours but he gets 6 hours of benefit and then from 12 to 3 he's sleeping 3 hours but he gets 3 hours so he's basically in the bed for 6 hours but taps into 9 hours of rest <laughs> so this is the best this is the best you can see even um from a medical standpoint that's that rest that time just is natural according to the circadian rhythm so all the uh, parts of our body our body internally externally gets rejuvenated you can see naturally sleeping late waking up late is going to bring in early aging the graying of the hair wrinkles on the face dark circles increased acidity problems so many issues come up even memory the person becomes uh, absent minded 
द की इज इन द हैंड एंड ही विल से चावी कहाँ है चावी कहाँ है मुझे लेट हो रहा है एंड देन ही विल हैव द चावी इन इज हैंड द की इज इन इज हैंड एंड ही सर्चिंग फॉर इट एवरी वेयर बिकॉज द पर्सन बिकम्स एप्स इन माइंडेड स्टार्ट फॉर गेटिंग डिटेल स्टार्ट फॉर गेटिंग कॉन्वर्जेशन स्टार्ट फॉर गेटिंग नेम्स बट द अर्लियर वी स्लीप द अर्लियर इट्स नॉट दैट अर्ली टू स्लीप एंड लेट टू राइस दैट्स नॉट वट आई एम सेंग वैन वी आर रेगुलेटेड एट दैट टाइम यू कैन सी दैट द the effective uh, cognitive uh, functionality is at its peak is at its peak his grace radhesham prabhu uh, was in one class mentioning something in this regard he mentioned that when he does a program let's say the program runs up to 9:30 at night now instead of driving at 9:30 9:45 at night from the home program to the temple what he does is he prefers to sleep in that home at night or maybe in a nearby uh, base base is a place uh, bhakti vedanta academy for cultural education b a c e it's a base is a place where boys are cultivated unmarried boys are cultivated so prabhu ji was mentioning let's say after the program if i drive back to the temple i'm going to face traffic one night traffic and second it's going to delay my sleep because the time of my getting to the bed is going to fluctuate and that disturbs my morning chanting so what he prefers is just to rest there let's say 9:30 the program gets done 9:45 you will rest there just have a room in that same house or in a nearby place if there's a place where um, an apartment where just boys are congregating together they live together then he can as a brahmachari stay there so what happens is sleeping time is still the same waking time remains the same after that Prabhu ji finishes his chanting. Now at around five thirty, six o'clock in the morning, after finishing your sixteen rounds, he goes back to the temple. So now there's no traffic, so the time of traveling is also cut short, and the sleep is not sacrificed, and the morning chanting is not sacrificed. Just like roti, sabji, dal, rice is important for the body, grains are important for the body. Chanting and hearing in the Brahma Murtha is important for the soul. It's very important. Because Putana is not prioritizing all this, Shukdev Goswami is feeling very sad, and he says, "Nishachari, she who walks around at night." So Shri Pad Balabha Chari Ji, I hope everyone is able to collect this whole conversation in um, totality, in line with the verse. It's not that I'm just reading the verse and speaking something else. I hope everyone's able to reconcile that properly. Shri Pad Balabha Chari Ji writes. Now coming back to his purport. He says that Putana um, either was in the shape of an owl. One. So point number one: either she was active at night as a human being, which is demoniac, or second, she was maybe in the shape of an owl, and the owls are active at night. So that's why she's Nisha Chari. Or three: here Nisha night can represent the path of Adharma. So she's walking on the path of Adharma, avoiding the light of the Sadhu Sangha. of the of uh, the saintly path he has mentioned this um another thing that has been mentioned is maybe putana was a crane as a bird why because her brother was bakasur baka he was a crane so and she is many times referred to as baki aho bakiyam stana kalakutam in the um third canto second chapter text 23 putana has been referred to as baki as the um, sister of bakasur and baki also means a female crane so that's another reference to maybe she was a bird <laughs> in her nija roopam astita maybe her original form was a bird and she became a beautiful woman tamkesha bandha gati shakta mallika here's another reference the harivamsha puran explains and i'm going to read the sanskrit for that putana nama shakuni ghora prani bhayankari ajaga mardharatre vai pakshu krodha dvidhunvati now look how putana has been described in the harivansha puran putana nama shakuni there was a, <laughs> a personality called as uh, putana and uh, how was she ghora prani bhayankari she was very horrifying and she gave fear to everyone 
she was fear inducing and a jagama ardharatre she arrived in the middle of the night and what did she do pakshau krodat vidhunvati she was shaking her wings pakshau krodat out of anger vidhunvati so the harivamsha puran describes that she was a fierce bird inducing fear in all living beings she arrived in the middle of the night and she was shaking her wings very intensely so wings refers to her form as a bird um so that is something that has been mentioned as far as nija rupa mastita and it's fascinating that even shila jiva goswami pad um when he refers to nija rupam he says uluki swarupam uluki ka ulu in some, in hindi we call a uh, owl as ullu right and that comes from the sanskrit word uluki ululika uh, uluki ka sorry uluki ka so jiva goswami also refers to putana as uluki ka and he says that um, she was probably in the shape of an owl shri jiva goswami pad writes her original form was an owl <laughs> so when shukdev goswami says nishachari and nija rupa mastita the acharyas have put together that her original form was something that moves at night as an owl hmm? yesterday of course we went into um detailed discussion about why putana has been compared to vritrasur in this verse and maybe we can refer to the recording from yesterday for that um but one last point that can be mentioned in this regard um, of course it is shila jiva goswami pad who says that prasariya goshthe that uh, goshta samipa deshe that um, it was kamsa's garden which got destroyed shila jiva goswami pad is um, mentioning that in a place near the pastures <laughs> it it didn't destroy brindavan but it was a garden of kamsa in brindavan hmm? that has been mentioned and also one final point for this verse in conclusion why has the word nripa been used that was the cliffhanger from yesterday what does the word nripa mean shila sanatan goswami in his brihad vaishnav toshini he has written that nrin pati iti nripa that the word nripa means the king who protects his citizens that's the meaning of the word nripa pa means to protect palayati uh, and nr means nara nrin uh, like nrsimha right half man half line so nrin pati iti so to to protect uh, to comfort to take care to nourish the citizens is the duty of the king So why is the word nirpa used here? Shila Sanatan Goswami Pad says for two reasons. One, Shukdev Goswami has the style to keep calling out to Parikshit Maharaj for attention, just to make sure that Parikshit Maharaj is not distracted. Not that he was distracted, but again and again to call him Anga. Anga means, oh, you are so dear to me, like the the arms in my body, or to call him Rajan, or to call him Rajendra, O oh, King, hmm? or to call him kurudwaha o descendant of the pandavas so to call him vishnu ratha o he who was protected by vishnu in the womb parikshit maharaj is being invoked many times so one similar invocation is nrupa o king just like when we lovingly speak to someone we like um, let's say let's say for example that person's name is um, krishna das prabhu for example so when you are speaking to them you will say or krishna prabhu main to ye keh raha tha ki acha acha suniye na prabhu ji so it's like a way to get their attention to keep them involved in a conversation right you don't have to read any books on effective communication and to better your you know to win the hearts of people leadership i mean if you want you can but you can learn these things even through bhagavatam shukdev goswami is teaching us as a speaker involve your audience even if the audience is maharaj parikshit keep calling on him in the sense that involve him ask him a question take his questions make sure that the attention is maintained and another reason why nripa has been used is nrin pati iti 
Nripa is a king who protects his citizens. So Shukdev Goswami is telling Parikshit Maharaj, Krishna is going to be the future king. Look, he has already started protecting Vrindavan by killing Putana. Oh Parikshit Maharaj, just like you, when you were the king, you would think about your citizens and protect them. Similarly, see, Vrajaraja Sutta, the son of the king of Braja, Nanda Maharaj's son and the future king, of course, Krishna, has started protecting Vrindavan from Putana by destroying her. And in this way, the 13th verse concludes. So tomorrow we will start with the 14th verse and we will move on slowly, definitely, but surely <laughs> on the path of studying this chapter. Whatever mistakes I am making, if I am um, making any mistakes in Siddhanta, I'm making mistakes. If I sound very um, unnecessarily instructive or boring and distracting and not doing justice to the content and the subject matter, may all of you kindly forgive me. And at the same time, if there is anything that is inspiring, um, let us try walking on that path because this inspiration is not coming from me. It is coming from Srimad Bhagavatam. Patita Pavan Shila Prabhu Pad ki Jai Nitai Gaur Premanande Hari Hari Go. Hare Krishna, dear Amran Guru, thank you so much for giving us such nectar and inspiring us, preparing us for the Damodar month, the Karthik month, which is going to start next week, so that we can wake up early and and chant. On this, if I have your permission to share one small story. Sure. So the devotees, you know, once I was listening to a class and uh, this is a very old class. So devotee was, you know, uh, want to make a phone call because he's traveling next day to some place. And th at that time in India, we had this SDO, PCO booth, if you have seen those yellow color booth. So he went there and trying to make call in the night. It was like 10 o'clock and he was not able to get through. He was so busy, so busy. So he asked why it's not able to go through. He says, uh, uh, Maharaj, please come tomorrow morning. Uh, I leave just about this. So, you know, I will open for you. Knock the door, I'll open it for you. So he came at around 3.30. And in the first shot, the call went. And then immediately he got realization that, you know, why is it like this? Then he asked, what is this? He says, in night, everybody tries to make phone calls because it's cheap, like, you know, one-eighth of the cost. So everybody's busy. And that's why you don't get the chance. And then if you call in the morning, everybody's sleeping. So there's no traffic and your call went through in the first call. So then in the sadhu got, you know, that uh, devotee got realization that this is amazing. This is how Krishna is. If you try to connect Krishna in the night, you know, it's so busy that you cannot get Krishna. But if you try in the early morning, Brahma Murga, first call, you say, Hare Krishna. And Krishna says, yes, I'm here. So I think that was very profound. And you just hit, hit that nail, Prabhuji. So thank you for the inspiration, dear devotees. Yesterday, despite uh, Prabhuji not being well, he still came and attended the class. Because the moment I sent Prabhuji, we are canceling the class. He said, no, 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 don't cancel. I'm coming. And he just came to us in five minutes. So this is a dedication Prabhuji is, you know, uh, showing to share the nectar, share this uh, beautiful uh, pastimes from Srimad Bhagavatam to all of us. So it's our responsibility to learn and implement this in our lives and also share among others. So we are very grateful to Gita Samrana Prabhu for inspiring all of us. I'm sure like I am getting inspiration. We all are getting inspired as well. So thank you dear devotees for giving your association. We look forward to see you tomorrow, same time, same place on our Zoom temple. Please remember day after tomorrow is Ekadashi in America, in US. So we'll be chanting uh, the rounds, the extra round with his case, Amrinda Prabhu. So please be ready for that meditation as well. With that, let's pray our gratitude to his case, Amrinda Prabhu, for such an inspirational class. Hare Krishna. Thank you very much.